So I just wanted to say a few words today as the sun is shining and it feels um, glorious and life for me is a, a brand new experience at 60. And I was th- cleaning my teeth there and thinking about the difference between being 30 and being 60 in something as simple as cleaning your teeth. I used to be very, um, shall we say, not quite as thorough as, as I should have been cleaning my teeth because I was always you know, in a desperate hurry to get out and enjoy myself and be seen. I was obsessed with being seen, perhaps not when I was 30. It was because I was I had kids and family. So, again, I was too busy to really spend time on myself. But now I spend about 10 minutes every morning and night cleaning my teeth. And I've got all these um, things that go on the end of my electric toothbrush, uh, like a pointy thing that goes in between all the crevices and gets all the plaque out and a, a bigger one for polishing. And I love doing it. It's really therapeutic, I, but I have to use this really large um, or enlarging, it's not actually large, but it's an enlarging mirror, 10 times enlarging. I think it could do with being a bit stronger, actually. And I have to get the right light so it sort of goes into my mouth. I mean, it's really tricky, but it's on a springy thing that you pull out from the wall, uh, a concertina, do you know what I mean? And I can, it's, I sit there for ages trying to get all the coffee stains off. And I was just thinking how... If I'd known, I mean, my teeth are fine. I've, they're all in my head bar one. And I've had a few fillings from when I was younger. But they're all, you know, people always say to me, you have lovely teeth. Well, it's because I spend a lot of time on them. But I was just thinking there about how when you're 30, 20, you know, 18, 10, maybe. No, I think this happens when you get a bit older, about 14, puberty. You don't respect people who are, el- in your eyes, elderly. So it's sort of anybody over 40, isn't it, really? You just think as an old person. Um, possibly even younger. I mean, I remember thinking a 25-year-old was ancient. And it it struck me that society doesn't really have that much um, respect for elders, it, certainly in Western society, certainly in British culture. Um, you know, we our elderly, are, are, they're fine with money. The government pays good money to keep them alive but anything else really when it comes to respect or pedestals you know putting people on a pedestal unless they fought in a war and got a bunch of medals it's very hard very hard for women especially in our society and and I talk about the English society it's the only one I I can talk about um, to achieve any um, sort of place of worth after a certain age it's probably menopause more than anything, I guess. Um, but I didn't have any respect. So how can I expect anybody else to have any respect for people my age? So it needs to change with us, I think. It needs for us to say, I am valuable. Here's what I can do. Here's what I'm really good at. And to instill in our kids, if we can. I mean, my kids don't. You know, they're like any other kids. They they just think you're old and has been and irrelevant. And th- this is a curse, really. But it starts with how you think about you when you're younger. And the best piece of advice that I never got was until about a year ago was look after your future self. And I never thought about it like that. And it comes down to the simplest of things like cleaning your teeth, but also um, really important things like, you know, mental health. Really, really important. And I I wasn't looking after my future self. I was burning both ends, working like a Trojan, drinking too much, which, you know, don't get me wrong, it was great fun. But I wasn't thinking about how I would feel physically physically as a human, you know, an active human being, would I be inactive, for example? Um, At that time, I didn't care about my future self because I thought at 60 I'd be miserable and life wouldn't be worth living. Of course, I've got here and it's, it's not. It's absolutely wonderful. I've got time to clean my teeth, you know, for 10 minutes, morning and night. And there are other things, you know, my, my aches and pains, they're, I should have really looked after myself when I was younger and I'd got in, I mean, I was, 
you know, quite badly beaten a couple of times. And I'm not saying I could have not been beaten, but if I'd realised that I'd have constant arthritis as a result of that, perhaps I would have thought more wisely about who I married. Do you see what I mean? These little things, because you, you, we, we can't see ourselves as a future entity. And it's really disappointed me today as I was cleaning my teeth. Why couldn't I see myself? Because now I can see myself at 80 and 90 and 100. And I really want to look after my future self. I want to keep my teeth. I want to keep my hair. I want to keep really fit. I want to carry on with my ballet. You know, all of these things are really imperative. And I see myself at 90 and and possibly even 100. Actually, I see myself at 110 in my in my painter's smock creating beautiful artworks. I still see that person, but I want that person to be the best that she can be. And that means mental health, physical health, career, finances. There's a dog barking outside. I do apologise. Um, you, you see what I mean? It's, it's, it's not just any one thing. I mean, lots of people think, oh, I'll, I'll sort out the pension. So I don't, you know, I've got all the money sorted out. So that doesn't matter. But what about the other stuff? That's what I'm talking about. What about looking, looking uh, from in the now at, at 100 and not looking so far back? And thinking, oh, oh, it's a good time, therefore it's worth being here now. I don't, I really don't want to be looking back. Um, mostly because I've effed up royally looking back. You know, I want to look forward. I want to create new memories in my, um, in my final quarter, as I describe it. It's probably not my final quarter, is it? I'm not there yet. It's definitely my, my final half, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's really important, I think, to create keep creating new memories as you as you go along you know each day if you can um and you know that what that entails is actually arranging things actually sitting down and arranging something because we can let life just slip by a, you know watery fountain you know up and then down and then gone you know that's that if we're not careful we need to do things to mix things up a bit you know do something else do something different m- make new friends i mean i don't get me wrong the friends thing is a totally um difficult situation to be in especially for someone like me I'm a writer artist podcaster all of these things and that's you know I spend a lot of time in an insular capacity shall I pause this while that dog keeps going okay it stopped uh it's obviously killed the postman or whatever it did um anyway uh so the point I think uh, the the premise of 60 summers was to say that's my cat was to celebrate um, being 60. And and I I always thought it was kind of important that my children could look at me and think, actually, do you know what? I'm quite looking forward to it. I mean, what, what if the world felt that way? I'm looking forward to getting older. That would be great, wouldn't it? And I think it would make lots of us much, much happier. None of us want to die. I mean, that's it goes without saying. Or well, some of us do, of course. But, you know... We have an inbuilt survival mechanism, don't we? All humans do, all animals do, to survive no matter what, to keep going. Um, And I'm not really talking about that. I'm not talking about looking death in the face and looking forward to that day. I'm talking about looking forward to living a rich and fulfilling life up until that day comes, do you see? And... The part of that is having respect for everybody in the world, no matter what age they are. We, society favours youth, favours the young, favours re- people who can reproduce, but doesn't favour people who no longer partake in, in biological functions or whose health is bound to actually deteriorate rather than um, to stay stable. And these these things are tied up with economics, partly, um, you know, 
the the idea of a child who can work for a society and create income or the idea of a child who as it grows can produce ch- offspring and these are very valuable things in in society but we don't live in societies like that anymore we we live in a different world we live in a world where actually you can have a, a productive career using very little of your body so it, it it doesn't matter if it's falling apart and and we live in a world where actually children can be seen as expensive you know we don't live in a world anymore where um we have 10 children because they'll all go and earn money for us look i know that does happen in some countries and it's horrific but we we that's not how we live in the west is it let's face it we don't need children to earn us money because we can all earn money but i mean these are just kind of basic leveling biological hormonal um uh, dic- dictation uh, dictatorial patterns of of living life do you see what i mean and and they become irrelevant the more we embrace technology and the more of a machine we become and it's often criticised, but actually the the trick is to work this really, really well. It's what I make my art about. You know, how do we use the machine to become part of us as functioning human beings um, without hurting people? It, it would be ridiculous to create machines that hurt people, wouldn't it? It would be absurd, it would be obscene. I mean, that's they do, of course, in nuclear weapons and what have you. But, uh, you know, the, the normal life with a machine, with technology theoretically now can carry on until your brain goes and of course that's another worry but we're very close to a cure for all that we're very close to finding out what it is that causes uh, dementia and alzheimer's and probably i mean i i don't know about you but i feel pretty sure that they'll find a cure in my lifetime um whether they'll be able to cure someone like me who who perhaps you know is hit by that terrible disease is an unknown because it it may be that you have to get in there quick um you know when you're younger for example when you first spot things um but but you know there's so many things we can do and we're in this this final half final quarter in terms of really creating a life for ourselves where we are valued and I guess that's my 60 summers mission you know I want to look healthy I want to stay beautiful I I work at it I work very hard to be beautiful you know I it's important to me because I make videos and I make keep fit videos but I make art I'm I'm busy all the time creating things for people to consume um, for people to watch, for people to listen to, for people to learn, um, and for people to be entertained. And I want to do that really, and I look forward, very forward to doing that with all the inv- advancements of technology, because in five years' time I'll be using different technology and it'll be even easier than it is now. I mean, at the moment I have to stand up, so I'm always standing up to record my podcasts, and I stand up when I'm typing because um, of sort of injury and arthritis but actually that's healthier for me anyway and I I should have been doing that when I was 20 we didn't have computers then Um, we didn't have phones or anything and it sounds weird doesn't it but we didn't Um, but I'm probably a bit damaged because of all the sitting over a computer and this is what I'm talking about looking after the the future so not burning the candle at both ends not um, uh, you know doing something over and over again and getting RSI and then be having the inability or, or becoming infirm because of it and keep that brain going, you know, keep listening, keep talking, keep making, keep adding up, um, keep remembering numbers and keep doing your crosswords, all of that. So that's my little introduction to 60 Summers and, and how I feel about it and where it falls in the great cosmos and the great scheme of all the things that I do. Um, so join my channel on youtube if you if you can pop over to the forum on telltale club website and hook up or just you know be a passive bystander i don't mind at all i know lots of people listen to this podcast so it doesn't worry me who you are or what what you look like or what you do or what age you are it really doesn't i just like that you're listening so um much love from serverland